Hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be part of a rotator cuff tear series that we're going to put through. And in this first video, we're going to take a look at what a rotator cuff tear looks like using a model. Okay everyone, so you might recognize this model if you've seen some of our other rotator cuff videos, but this is our trusty model and it helps us uh, understand the anatomy of the shoulder. And this is the shoulder blade right here. Here's our collarbone. And this is the upper part of the arm bone uh, called the humerus. And helping me today is some arthroscopic instrumentation. We uh, call this a grasper. And this allows us to grasp and uh, manipulate tissue through uh, small poke holes we call portals uh, during an arthroscopic surgery. And so we'll get you guys oriented real quick here. So again, there's four tendons of the rotator cuff. The uh, first tendon uh, when looking directly at the shoulder is this one right here. This is the subscapularis. And then we have the supraspinatus coming along the top. And then we have along the back, of the shoulder, if we're looking along the back, we have the infraspinatus and then the teres minor comes along the back right here. So to help you guys understand some of the arthroscopic videos that we will be showing, I'm going to try to orient the shoulder in such a way uh, that it makes sense. So often when we do arthroscopic surgery, we're looking from the back towards the front and um, in this particular orientation, we're facing the back. So this is the, say, the back of the patient and the front is on this side. And so with the arthroscopic camera, we will uh, be looking in this orientation. And so we uh, can put our grasper on the tear like this. We can actually manipulate the tendon up and down like so. And so that's one vantage point that we might see. And the other vantage point during the arthroscopic surgery often is looking straight at the tendon, just like this. And then during the surgery, we will need to identify the tear and need to identify the pattern of the tear. But essentially, a rotator cuff tear is where the tendon, so for example, I'm grabbing with my instrument the supraspinatus tendon, um, a tear is when the tendon actually will rip off the bone. And so during the arthroscopic surgery, you might uh, see uh, this tendon torn and we track it up and away uh, from the bone just like this. So returning back to this orientation where we are looking towards the back of the patient's shoulder uh, with the front being on this side, and you can really see how the rotator cuff totally covers the uh, humerus bone uh, really in a total cuff of tissue. And uh, this orientation is important because during a large part of our rotator cuff surgery, um, we're looking from uh, lateral out this way towards deeper into the shoulder. And so you might see tears where one of the tendons tears off the bone and they will actually retract down in deep into the shoulder. And so any one of these tendons can actually do this. And so if we simulate that appearance, which will be a little tricky with the model here, but we'll try. So just imagine this tendon tearing and, um, and this tendon retracting up into the shoulder. And what we can see is the actual socket, uh, just like this. And so I think we got it right there. I uh, forgot to mention this is the biceps tendon, which is sometimes involved in everything. And so if we focus in and zoom in, we can see the humerus bone, which is right here, right there, the greater tuberosity. And this is a bump of bone on the humerus where the rotator cuff attaches to. And then looking deep into the shoulder, right there is the socket, the glenoid. And so this is a common uh, orientation that we'll see during the arthroscopic part of the surgery. And seeing it this way in the model, I think, will orient you guys uh, so that you can understand the arthroscopic videos that we'll show in a later video. So we're back at this view for uh, one last uh, look. And again, we can see how the rotator cuff normally 
attaches the bone just like this. We have a tear moving up this way, and we've got a tear back here of the infraspinatus. Uh, if you imagine the rotator cuff tendon tearing off the bone right there and then re retracting that way. And so during the surgery, we'll come in with our instrument and we need to bring that tendon back down where it belongs. And we just uh, reduce the tendon back to the bone and then we place all of our implants uh, to fix it with sutures and things like that. So hopefully after watching this video, everybody has a general idea of what a rotator cuff tear looks like uh, with the tendon tearing off the bone and retracting down into the shoulder and what our goals are in regards to actually taking the tear and putting it back where it belongs.